So we're here um, in the third week of January now, 2023, and we're going to do a, a market update on both the UK and Ireland. And I suppose, Matthew, we have you here today in person, unlike previous times when you were here virtually. Uh, you're in here, I suppose, to look at some livestock, potentially for uh, buyers you have in the UK. I suppose specific, ma mainly in the, the maiden heifer aspect of the trade. So maybe to start with, do you want to explain where the market is in the UK for the various groups of livestock you have? March, April, May, calving cows, crossbred cows, they're in demand. We have, haven't got many um, available, so we are looking for more groups. Um, springing calf heifers, uh, black and white February, March calvers, again, they're in demand. Um, prices for lean calf heifers are in the region of 12 to 1300 pound, and the cows are something similar. Have they increased in price all prior to Christmas? I think they were maybe a bit off that. Why have they increased? I think as we come in closer to carving, they're starting to bag up, they're starting to move now, closer to profit, people are willing to pay that little bit extra for them. Forage is still in short supply in the UK, so the longer people have let, you know, tried to leave it as long as they can, but uh, there's a demand there now. Okay, so who's, who's looking for the, that stock then, Matthew, sure to categorise them? Um, there's people that have lost stock with TB, um, a few expanding, and there's also quite a few people looking to change systems, so they're looking to try a few spring carving cows, spring carving heifers, just to see how they get on and uh, just make more use of grazing this year than what they had maybe done in previous years. And why that change? I think uh, the input costs, you know, the, the increase in input costs, people are just questioning the expenditure and they are looking more to get more from the farm, what they've got, and the use of grass is becoming more critical within that. So they are just looking to see whether they can tweak the system they've got and just make that little changes that might make a big difference to the bottom line. And am I right in saying you were on a farm recently where there was maybe a comparison done of uh, a huge variation in milk price, where maybe solids were poor on th and the result yes. in poor price? That's correct. So I was on a farm and uh, we've been all on the same milk contract, supplying the same dairy. And there's up to 16 pence a litre difference between the highest price and the lowest price. And that was purely on milk solids. Um, so it, it, it's coming more, more so that milk solids really do make the big difference to the bottom line. Right. OK. So Pat, maybe and we'll come back to you again, Matthew. Pat, on the Irish side then, say what's in demand on, in Ireland at the moment? Yeah, still the spring and calf heifers, Bertie. Still, there's, there's guys still coming to the table. I suppose we are seeing, as we have maybe for the last two or three months, strong demand for cows. You know, we, we're still looking for herd sales. We're not getting as many herd sales in. I suppose high milk price, people are saying they'll stay in for another year or so. Um, they might be under as much pressure to, to get out of cows or for different circumstances. But there's a very strong demand for cows, similar to what Matthew was saying. In calf heifers, still, there's still obviously the strong demand for those prior to calving you now, and as we're in the last week of January. Um, bulling heifers is starting to kick off, but the demand really, I suppose, that we have customers in the car for is in calf heifers and cows. That they're the, the two big ones, I suppose, at the moment. Okay, so the folks on in calf heifers, what prices are they making and what is the spec? Yeah, so anywhere between 15 to 1700 still, Bertie. Um, I suppose Matthew said there about the UK that the prices has gone up closer to calving. We don't see that as much here, maybe. The prices will hold from November right through until January, um, but it's harder to get the quality animals. You know, if customers look for 220, 230 average EBI, they're very hard to get at this stage. So the, the, there is still good heifers, which, which you know, I bred good heifers, but um, that's, I suppose, the, the slight difference there maybe between Ireland and the UK there. Okay, herd sales. Um, what prices have you got, say, recently for some of your herd sales? Yeah, we sold um, one group there, it was 16, anywhere between 16, 16, 50. Um, I suppose what's keeping prices up there and the, the herds, and look, every herd of cows is different, you know, there's a massive variation between the herds, between if there's a lot of young cows or older cows in it, the calving dates, then the spread, sometimes you might have a later spread, earlier spread, that makes a big difference, obviously, in a herd of cows, so you'd have to really go through the details, but look, that's roughly where we're averaging there. Um, the, I suppose the cows really has been kept up as well. There's a good cold cow price being given still, you know, so, so that really is keeping the, the price of cows. I don't see that dropping anytime soon, Bertie, to be okay. honest. Uh, is it too early yet for the wheeling market to take off? Or where is that? It is really, I suppose. We've, we've a few trades done there recently. Um, seven, around that 700, 750. But again, not many of them really sold yet. Um, they, they really go, once they're going out of the shade, it's when they really kick off and they'll be hot at that stage. Okay. 
Pat, in terms of buyers then, I suppose we were saying maybe there's three buyers and we were saying there's a TB buyer, there's a new entrant, and there's people who are still doing expansion. Could you maybe expand on those three? Yeah, I suppose like the TB, there's a lot of talk around farmers are calling to the TB is on the rise, it must be on the rise. TB numbers in fact were actually back last year um, in 2020. Instances were back, but the volume of animals within a farm might have risen. So obviously we're after seeing a massive increase in herd size in Ireland. So before you wouldn't have heard of the neighbour who's after losing two or three animals, you wouldn't hear it. But it's big news when someone loses 10 to 15 animals, you know. So the actual number of animals getting DB has decreased, but the instances is higher. So there is people coming to the table there now. A guy rang me the weekend, similar story to a lot of cases, 20 animals that he'd lost. He's after going clear. He needs them in the yard straight away. You know, he wants to get these in now this week before he was calving next week from next week on. Um, again, going back to the cold cow price, so I suppose guys are seeing that they're getting high prices. They might have milked on cows and kind of fattened them as they were milking them through the winter, and they're looking to replace those as well to upgrade, maybe get better stock, get rid of the empty cows or the poor performing cows, and uh, bring in young stock there as well. And then you have guys, I suppose, maybe we call it last minute that are after getting an extra bit of ground or just looking for maybe another 20 animals because they have that extra bit of ground got or, you know, different, different situations there, I suppose, that people are looking for just increased numbers slightly. Are we more new entrants inquiring than we had last year, this time last year? Yes, I would say short answer, yes. Yeah. Why? I suppose milk price last year, it is hard, mm. to, hard to ignore it if you're, if you're in a different system. You know, it's, it's hard to ignore inputs, like if you're looking at beef and tillage and that inputs have gone up as well, but um, the big price is, is dictating everything, Bertie, I suppose. Yeah, and less of a handbrake maybe from co-ops, they're willing to take on a few more because it's probably people getting out on the other side. How would you do, describe the mood in the sector at the moment? It's all positive, Bertie, I suppose. We're seeing it at the moment, like there's great demand there. There's a, there, there I was at the Positive Farmers Conference, we the Grassland Conference last week. Mood is positive. Um, mood is positive in general. People have, the, yes, milk price is probably going to come back next year. I think farm is in a good place overall. Okay. So, Matthew, to follow on from Pat's question there, what's the mood in the UK dairy industry like currently? Again, uh, the mood in the UK is positive. Yes, we all know there's probably a milk price drop coming, but input prices have pulled back a bit this last few weeks. People are adjusting their systems to the new price, and it's taken a good 12 months for them to really take that on board. Um, but sentiment's good. Sentiment is good. Um, you know, a good grass year now will put people in a lot of good place. Um, traditionally, we would have probably been exporting quite a bit to the UK in terms of cows and stuff like that, Matt. Did you see that happening this year or, or what factors might affect that currently are you seeing? I, I think that the high cow prices in Ireland, the currency and the transport costs might just put the Irish cows a little out of reach to the UK buyer. Um, there's buyers there, and Pat, you can probably answer this better than me. Is, is the cows here going to be available for the UK? or? Yeah, not I honest opinion. February calvers, it will be a no, but I think that we'll still have the, the March April calver. We can still, we'll still get them over to the UK. Um, traditionally, we sell an awful lot of those animals to the UK. Maybe in a fortnight's time, they, re they really kick off, but I don't see February calvers going over. Again, similar to yourselves, cows are in demand here. You know, people want to, they just want the, the mature milk rather than the heifers. So there's strong demand for cows of both sides, really, isn't there? And would that be dry cows available or would that be the, the big calf now and available as calf cows? Yeah, both, Matthew, I suppose, the, the calved and we always see, I suppose, look, the, we always see it that the farmers, they've kind of their cut off date. So then anything calved after that, they want, they yes. want out, of the, out of the yard. But they're happy to calve them down, you know, especially maybe if they're getting close to calving, we're obviously not going to move them. So they, want, they, they would be happy to calve them down and move them then as freshly calved. But they will have started breeding. So they know that the cow that is calved and they're starting breeding at the other side, she's not going to make it into the system the following, the following year. So they, they're coming available then. So maiden heifers are probably a more realistic option in terms of potential demand, maybe in that North Wales area or some of the... Yes, I think they will. Um, you know, there's quite a lot of new entrants going into, into the business in the next two years within North Wales. So calves, well-bred calves and maiden heifers will be an option for them. Um, again, I don't think there will be enough in the UK to supply that and we'll be looking towards Ireland again to do that. Um, and availability will be here. It will be here again, yeah. It will be, as I said, it will be, um, we'll say, once the main block of calving is over, farmers don't want to see us in the yard for the first week or two of February. So it gives us a chance to draw our breath and get ready then again for the next season as we see it kicking off again. So that will be the bullying heifers there. They'll be going out of the jolt. Hopefully, place will have dried up. 
and uh, they'll be going out to grass then at that stage and people like to get them in and get them vaccinated before they, they go breeding as well, you know. Yeah. And uh, briefly, Matthew, why North Wales? Why, why the potential there for expansion or why, why the appetite there for us? There's, um, in the past, there's been big expansion into dairy and from beef and sheep in North Wales. They've done very well. I think neighbouring farms have seen that and seen how they can progress. And, you know, there is a big trend going for more sheep and beef to dairy. Um, they they favour the crossbred cow in North Wales because the train is a little bit more harder work. Um, but the growth sector's there. There's, there's dairies there that will take spring milk. Uh, there's a new dairy being set up that will take spring milk. Um, there's a big growth sector in North Wales. OK, and we probably have seen that with demand for our other services with mapping and, and design of yards and stuff like that. So we're, we're, we're seeing some elements of that demand as well. Yeah. So just to finish, Matt, you know, last part as well, you know, what are you encouraging maybe sellers to ring with cows, is it? That's your number cow, one demand? Cow, number one demand's cows, anything close to calving. Feb, March, April, calving cows, we've got buyers for them to get in the car straight away. Yeah. Pat? Cows as well, herd sales. We've, we've a lot of guys looking for herd sales and looking to do forward deals on herd sales as well at Wood Edberty. So where the customer would go and look at the cows now and take them once they've calved down, agree a price now. And I suppose it just takes the, the pressure off the seller that before they get into the trenches of calving, that they know that um, there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel, I suppose, that there is a customer there for them. And again, for the buyer, it just secures the animals. They don't have to be worrying about it um, and not thinking about it. It is, it is a job done, you know, yeah. and move on with the other work that they have on farm. Yeah, and I suppose it goes without saying, Pat, there will be a lot of calves coming available now in the month of February, March, that you will have people maybe with very good quality calves, heifer calves, for yeah. people that might want to... Yeah, so we, we have, I suppose, we've lot, we, that will happen traditionally. We get a lot of calves coming to us. Um, I suppose with the herd builders um, offering that we have as well through grass tech, I suppose we're seeing customers there who look and improve the genetics, you know, and the fast way, the fastest way is to put animals on the ground rather than, you know, going through inseminations and maybe the, the genetic, genetic merit of the cows might be suitable or mightn't get the kick that they need. So we will have a lot of very good calves coming at us and uh, we're taking listings of those, I suppose, and with the herd builders then we'll, we'll potentially have buyers at the other side then so I suppose the animals would have to be genomically tested um, you know for to guarantee the, the, the sires and to get the, the correct PTAs I suppose for the potential buyer um, but yeah with hopefully they're noted that that will kick off there in the next uh, three to four weeks. Very good okay thanks for your time lads. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.